and Snell finding ways now to manufacture baskets. Air turnover into the wall. Auburndale will keep it. Leading by three. So Rosemont Alexis checks back in for the Bloodhounds. Shaka McGriff in for Lake Wales. And Snell will have a seat. Rosemont Alexis. <laughs> Fighting for the rebound is Henry. Oh, Daryl Henry had a good shot at that one, but couldn't, couldn't put it in. I think the right decision not coming back down with the basketball, just unable to finish. Just sticking with it. Steven has missed his last two from that territory. Devontae Frazier trying to force it, and they're going to call it on the floor. The one thing with both of these ball clubs, you have to pick up the ball handler early in transition. It can allow, allow them to penetrate, you know, past the three-point line, really push your defense in the vulnerable positions. Well, it is one of the biggest days for a high school athlete. Bright House Sports Network has you covered for National Signing Day 2013, February 6th. Live hourly updates at the top of every hour starting at 6 a.m. Bright House Sports Network is your home for high school sports. And on that day, Wednesday, February 6th, it is going to be our biggest day of the entire year. We hope you join us. Coach Randy Lee. 39 years old. Thrilled to be at Lake Wales as the head coach. His team in a dogfight tonight with Auburndale. Bloodhounds coming back. Daryl Henry, too strong. Elmo Steven couldn't put it in. Bloodhounds out of bounds. And one thing I think about this third quarter is Auburndale's been able to score some points and maintain the lead, but they have not run much offense. Lake Wells has really been making them force the issue, either scoring the basketball in transition or turning them over. On pass, they can take it back there without being called for a backcourt. Too frantic, though. And Lake Wales is going to win the battle there. Two on one. Brooks to shoot two. Again, Lake Wells is just speeding Auburndale up right now. They're just not in control like they were in the first half. Here is Douglas Brooks. He is a fan favorite in Highlanders country. It's amazing the kind of things he does, Andrick. He blocks shots, he gets steals, hits threes, just plays with reckless abandon. You know, for the last two years, I mean, he really just had to step in and kind of be the energy guy. You know, now he steps into a role this year where he's asked to be the guy. And I think he's been able to, to produce because of his role play for the last couple of years. Savante Frazier off the glass. And we are tied. <laughs> Auburndale needs a bucket. And they somehow get it. That's Keon Fleurgeau. How did he make that happen? In the freshman with an answer, and they desperately need it. Scramble for it. On the floor. Here come the Hounds. Daryl Henry scores. But can they make a living like this, Andrick, again? Back to a four-point lead. Fourth quarter going to be very interesting. Shaka McGriff off the glass. Goodness. Elmo Steven tries to step around the defender. Count it and send him to the line. If you want to 
want to have success in breaking pressure. It's key to get the basketball in the right player's hands here. Elmo Stevens elected to take the basketball to the rack himself, being rewarded with an opportunity for a three-point play. Did you have a Tickle Me Elmo growing up, Andrick? Drew, I'm 36, not six. Well, still, you know, some toys are ageless. You know what I mean? Almost Steven. I mean, if a Burt or Ernie, maybe a Big Bird, Oscar. Elmo, really? <laughs> Shaquille Snell, runner. Davion Riley at his pocket pit. Scramble for it. Elmo Steven, two on one. Henry puts it in, and it's back to an eight-point game. Armandale finishing the third quarter just like they did the second. Shaquille Snell is off with the three. Just when you thought Armandale was on the ropes, the Bloodhounds end the third quarter barking. 65-57. Well, what a great call quarter we have answer. ahead here on the Subway Restaurants Game of the Week. Back here on the game of the week. Well, look at the Lake Wales High School cheerleaders. Bright House Sports Network wants to help you pay for college. Log on to bhsn.com, learn more about the David Logan Scholarship. If you excel in athletics and academics, you can apply now for the Logan Scholarship online at bhsn.com. 65-57. Neil Snell, a big third quarter for the Highlanders. This is Shaka McGriff, and he has found the range. Highlanders seem to make big shots when they need them. Two on one. Bloodhounds need to match Lake Wales bucket for bucket. As Clerk Show off the glass, and he'll shoot one. Most freshmen would really want to try to make the wild play on this possession. And Keon Clerk Show showing you why the reins have been handed to him. Great decision. Attacking a defender as he was jabbing at him, not selling for the lob. So Quay Williams checks into the game for Lake Wales. And here is Keon Clergeau. This ninth grader has been very impressive tonight. Lead is eight. Wide open. Snell. Air ball. Dedrick Brinson tried to put it up and in. And he is fouled. Mike Alexis going to get whistled. Dedrick Brinson, 6'4", junior, now at the line. This is a guy who is just a role player. Jumps on the floor to get steals, takes charges, rebounds the basketball, just wreaks havoc, does all the little things you need to be a championship club. The Lake Wells basketball program has been predicated on guys understanding their role in the format of the team, and it carries over. Leon two. Here come the Highlanders right back. It's been this type of tempo all night long. Four on none. And now getting back is one Auburndale player, and that's a great play by Raylon Garrett. I am sure glad I'm not doing play-by-play -play tonight, my friend. Right, BHSN is getting their money's worth out of you. Can you please tell my supervisor that? Here, just back and forth action and ask me just a smart foul, not giving up the easy two. Douglas Brooks. 
Two shots. Where do you think he fits in, Andrick, on the college level? Is he a solid D1 guy? Is he a mid-major guy? Where do you see him playing? I mean, you mentioned schools like VCU, and I look at the way that Virginia Commonwealth plays. They like to get out with a little bit of pressure. Coach Shocker Smart does a great job. He's a high-energy guy. He's wild where he can shoot the basketball. I can see him fitting into a system like that. The next seven minutes, taking care of the basketball is going to be the biggest key for Auburndale. As finishing is Clergeau, and he continues to be unfazed. Snell, quick shot. Clergeau rips it down. Look at the bounce pass to Henry. Timeout on the floor. Hello, world. My name is Keon Clergeau. It's a coming out party for Keon. Clergeau grabbing the rebound and the half court length bounce pass between two defenders for the dime. Well, Andrick, tonight, as we watch Lake Wales right now, a little inconsistent, trailing by 10. There has been a lot of activity at Lake Wales High School over the last few days. One of their top assistants for the past two decades, Bernie Hayes, was fired. Story this morning in the Lakeland Ledger. He was a substitute teacher at the school. He was an assistant coach and one of those guys that was always around the program. He has been a huge part of it. And from what I understand, a lot of these young men looked up to him like a father. What happened was it was an incident where he tried to break up a fight, put his hands on a student the wrong way. And there you go, a similar situation that led to the dismissal of the past head coach, Billy Washington. So really, really tough circumstances Lake Wales has had to overcome over the past year. You know, I've known Coach Bernie Hayes since I was in high school. And uh, he has always been a strong pillar, not only for basketball players, but for the Lake Wells community. And, and I just find it hard to believe, again, I don't know facts, I'm not there, but I find it hard to believe that Coach Hayes would do anything, um, you know, to hurt a student. You know, I, we're not there, we're not part of the organization, but I tell you what, the kids are uh, going to sorely miss his influence on that bench at Lake Wells. He's been a pillar there for years. Well, it's just unfortunate. You got guys like Coach Washington and now, Coach Hayes, good men that love the program, that incidents similar have led to the dismissal of both. It's just a shame. Here, an eight-point game. Auburndale trying to keep pace. Out of bounds. The Bloodhounds will inbound. Well, the Highlanders are going to have to find a way to fine-tune their defense. They did a great job early on in the third quarter, turning Auburndale over. I think they've gotten sucked up. Looks a little too aggressive right now on the defensive end. Finding ways to get stops in the half court. The only way they're going to get back in this contest. Elmo Steven. He has done so much tonight. Dishes off to Henry. And the blitzkrieg for Auburndale continues. It's going to be a foul on Derwin James. See that foul now puts Lake Wells in the bonus for the rest of the contest. in for Auburndale as to Quavon Williams nicknamed the real deal puts down a free throw now heads to the bench he has done his job tonight Smart with 
the basketball up nine points. Just like they were the first time these two ball clubs met. Derwin James dishes it off. Deion Plurjo. Floater. Oh, up and in. Derwin James. He got high in the sky. Young man has such a great nose for the basketball. Deep three-pointer. Douglas Brooks not done. Douglas Brooks shooting that one from Highway 27. 76, 68, four and change left to go. Bodies colliding right near our photographer, Randy Levine. Keep in mind, last time these two teams played, Auburndale led by nine with four minutes to go, and Lake Wales trimmed the gap and won the game. Pretty sure that is fresh in these young man's mind. Elmo Steven off the glass. Boy, he has played exceptional. Marcus Dewberry looking for some room. Brooks from the corner. Auburndale running again. Lake Wales got to get back better than that. Steven, easy bucket. No, it rims out. And a foul called underneath. Teams have got to be exhausted. Oh, Douglas Brooks is going to come up with the foul over there in the corner. Thought it was a little contact. And Auburndale again, a couple of point blank looks. Not able to cash in. Henry. From Institutions, Davon Riley checks in. Dedrick Brinson has a seat for Lake Wales. Seventy nine sixty eight. 11-point lead, Dewberry. Shots like that have got to start going down for the Highlanders. Brooks off balance. James came away with it. Auburndale running again. Challenged at the rim. Clerchot couldn't finish. Brooks, Snell wide open. They'll shoot two. Again, Lake Wells speeding up Auburndale. Unable to extend this 11-point lead. All right, now the score 79-68. Timeout on the floor. Auburndale leads Lake Wales with three minutes, 41 seconds to play. Let's check in at Ridge Community. Ryan Bass is at the George Jenkins Ridge Community game. Yeah, an 11-point lead for George Jenkins at the half has now been cut to about three as we enter the fourth quarter here. Ridge storming back to cut into the lead. If you want to check out the full highlights, they'll be available online tonight at phsn.com. Back to you guys. Four. 79-68. Auburndale and Lake Wales. Alongside Andrick Frazier, I'm Drew Felios. Auburndale High School. Coach Eric Robinson, his best team. In 2005 and 2006, they were 22 and 6 and advanced to the regionals. This team, by the looks of them, has got the potential to equal that, perhaps even top it. Coach Robinson has a daughter, Courtney, who plays for Winterhaven, and a son, Christian, who is 10 years old. Basketball in the family. Speaking of the family, how is your daughter doing at Tampa Prep? We're in full swing of club volleyball season. You know, it's kind of every weekend I just kind of look at my, my calendar and figure out where we're going to be, if it's Orlando or Jacksonville or Miami, Atlanta. So uh, sports are never down in the Fraser household. Thanks for asking. You're welcome. He 
Cincinnati back to single digits. Douglas Brooks now going to try and pressure the freshman. <laughs> That's funny watching the freshman operate against the senior. Mind games big time. They're just trying to heat him up, force the turnover. Douglas Brooks. Free throws good. Keon Clergeau, the guy who wasn't even supposed to be in the starting lineup when this academic year started. He has played big tonight. Every coach always tells you you have to be ready no matter how far down the bench you are. When your numbers call, you may not get the opportunity again. Clergeau has seized the opportunity. Brooks, that's a deep shot. Gonna go to Auburndale. I think it's kind of early for Lake Wells to be relying on three-point shots. They've put, done a good job with this pressure. Attack the basket, try to score points with the clock stop from the free throw line. Now gonna be called. Daryl Henry is gonna go to the line, and the frustration you can see setting in for Lake Wales are starting to realize, Hendrick, this probably is not going to be their night. Still plenty of time to go. Well, they're doing a good job of setting the press, but just getting sucked up too far. I mean, the pass back towards the basket does not hurt you. I mean, you still have the 10 second count in your favor, but it's the cross court pass and getting the basketball to the middle against the pressure that's continued to kill Lake Wales. Leading score for Lake Wales is Douglas Brooks. He's got 22 points for the Highlanders. Snell has also had a big night offensively. Great shot by Williams, no good. And there's Clergeau with another rebound. for Armandale to get good court spacing. Deep shot is good, and that could be the dagger. The crowd on their feet as John Barrett teed it up. Big time shot from the junior from the corner. Brooks leaves it short. Williams puts it in, and he'll shoot one. Quavion Williams continues to do a great job on the glass. Here, Bear is spotted up in the left wing. Clarjeau with yet another assist. Throw good. Approaching the two minute mark. Dewberry into the scores table. Able to save it as Shaka McGriff puts it in. And timeout on the floor. We're not done yet. Auburn tail by 10 now, 85 to 75. Lake Wales. In danger of dropping the first game to Auburndale in seven tries. They have won the past six meetings against the Bloodhounds, but tonight's been a different story. You know, it's, Auburndale's really been in control of this contest from the tip. You know, but again, it's do they have the ability to finish down the stretch? 
You know, typically a 10-point lead with two minutes left, it's time for you to be comfortable. Never the case when you're playing against the Highlanders. Well, let's take a look at the upcoming schedule. For Auburndale, there you go. They got Tenorock, Hardy. And those are teams that they have already beaten this season. Bartram Trail, Sunrise Christian, and Winter Haven. Not a lot of rest in the final stretch of the season. This ball club is hard to believe that we're only, you know, three weeks away from the district tournament. The season's really flown by. Throw it away. Lake Wales needs a bucket here. A three-pointer would put him right back in it. In and out. Dewberry couldn't get it to fall. John Barrett controlling now, top of the key. And the Bloodhounds will set it up. Eon Clergeau, the freshman, operating. Down the middle, and just out. They don't have to hurry it up in this situation. That's something Coach Robinson can talk to his team about after the game. Savante Frazier on the other end will shoot a couple. I mean, this is the type of things that drive coaches nuts. You have the opportunity to get an offensive rebound. You're up by 10, the clock's in your favor. Pull the basketball out. You're shooting two free throws the rest of the way. Force Lake Wells to foul you. Dante Frazier. First free throw is good. Lake Wales has won three straight coming into tonight. They took down Gainesville, Auburndale, and then Hardy, 88 to 80. So this would be the first loss in a while. But Lake Wales has played four of the top 20 teams, Andrick, in the country. South win out of Memphis, Chester High School, and Bartow. Slipped. Thrown away. Islanders need a bucket. Foul again. Frazier to the line again. You know, it's like watching your favorite rerun right now with Coach Robinson, and you're just hoping for a different outcome. And for him, I hope the DVR is not true. Been in this situation so many times against Lake Wells and just not able to put the final nail in the coffin.